Welcome back to the Sportsman Zone. On Thursday, FIFA held its first in-person Congress for approximately three years. Many, if not most, in attendance at the Doha Exhibition and the Convention Center in Qatar were left bemused as to why Russian delegate Alexis Sorokin was allowed to attend. Speaking to journalists at the end of the Congress, the man who led Russia's World Cup bid in 2018 described the country's expulsion from World Cup qualifying as unfair. It would have been fair to Russian uh, football fans if our team continued in the qualifications. And uh, it would be just for us to win or lose our right to be in the World Cup uh, on the sporting ground, not on legal battles. Well, there's, there's always different kinds of talks, but uh, legally we do not see any, any reasonable grounds for us not to be at the Congress. We, the Russian Football Federation did not break any FIFA statutes or any other, uh, any other regulations. And why should it be uh, not present at the Congress? I don't see any reason why. FIFA wrong or right to admit him? Mm, to admit him? Mm. I don't think they were. I don't think they were right. Um, they have expelled them from World Cup qualifying competition, which means that they have been ostracised from football. So, as a result, what happened at the Congress is a, a football appointment, and uh, I'm, I'm not sure he should have been allowed to go. And I think the, the consensus of opinion from the delegates would support that. All right. So mm. what about this? Mm. Yes, they have been barred from World Cup qualifying, but they have not been barred from being a FIFA member. In other words, their FIFA membership has not been revoked. Yes. This was a summit of all FIFA members, including those who have qualified for the World Cup and others. It was for everybody in the FIFA family. Now, there is a truant well, stronger than truant, there is a pariah in the family mm -hmm. who turns up for dinner, the big family gathering. Mm -hmm. there, they, so, so, so could it be that because of the nearsightedness of only applying a sanction to them relative to the FIFA World Cup qualification mm -hmm. and not then deciding yes. to ban them yes. as a FIFA member, to suspend their standing until such time. Yes. So really and truly, FIFA was constrained, Lance, to say to the security guards, ban anybody from Russia who declares, uh, uh, who identifies as a Russian who wants to come in because mm -hmm. Russia is banned. So because of that, Mr. Sorokin turns up and they say, oh, crap. We didn't ban him, we didn't ban or suspend Russia, so yeah. we can't do anything. I suspect that yeah. that's what happened. Yeah, I, I wonder though if in a situation like this, we know he is a high ranking official in, in Russian football, so he would be, by his very job title, um, qualified to be there. But those, those, those events, do they not have accreditation yes. per event? Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm going here because I want to know. If he was given a green light from FIFA from it before even traveling yes. to be there, right. or, or if, as you suggested or hinted, that it, it may have been an oversight and he just arrived and, and no one knew what to do with him. Well, I, I'm, saying, I, well, I'm saying everything. This, I'm saying the same thing you're saying, yeah. that he was accredited. Well, he was. I'm saying he was because to get into those things, you mm. have to have some credential to show yeah. at, a po at the points of entry, the various points of security checks and otherwise. Mm. So he would have been credentialed. Yeah. And he would have been credentialed because FIFA did not ban Russia from the international footballing family. It's a very important point, Lance, because here's the thing. Mm. Remember, FIFA were loath to act on Russia in terms of their presence in the World Cup qualifying campaign. It was only after their hand was forced by the Swedes, the Poles, and the yes. Czechs, yes. who said, we are not playing uh, these right. games against That's Russia. Right. So, yeah. we don't, so they were so boxed into a corner. They were nudged. Yeah. Exactly. So, so Infantino, what, at his original press conference on the Russian issue, mm -hmm. said nothing about kicking Russia out of World Cup qualifying when the whole world was expecting him to do so. Then when the other countries wrote the letters to FIFA indicating that we will not honor fixtures against Russia, yeah. we will not go to Russia, mm -hmm. he came back again to say, okay, we're kicking them out of World Cup qualifying. But the question, Lance, was not asked of FIFA mm -hmm. to suspend Russia from the footballing family. 
Hence, given that they weren't suspended from the footballing family, FIFA had no right to then bar a member mm -hmm. who has not been red flagged or made pariah in the context of the world family from attending, and that's how he could attend. And that, I'm suggesting to you, mm -hmm. is an oversight on FIFA's part yeah. for an organization that didn't really want to act against Russia in the first place and was happy to see that nobody asked them yeah. to ban Russia from the world family in order for them to continue relations. Yeah, but my experience with how FIFA operates, George, and not only FIFA, but football, football governing bodies, even domestically, is that there, there is an issue of trust and um, transparency in how things are done. And to be quite honest with you, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Gianni Infantino, on his own, in a private discussion with a Sorkin, um, told him, yeah, c come on, just you, you can come in. No, no one can stop you. Here's the thing. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not hard to believe, you know. But it, it isn't. It is not hard to believe. But unlike local football associations... I don't want to say regional because I don't want Mr. Montagliani and, 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 and Randy Harris to believe that I'm, I'm, I'm throwing words at them. But yeah. unlike in those context lands where a president can say, um, let that man in. At the level of FIFA, I think it's different. And where admission, uh, there's a committee that would be responsible for the guests. There's another subcommittee would be responsible for processing I, the credentials. Okay. I was just saying uh, this could have happened yeah. before he traveled. I'm not saying this was something that yeah. just happened on the fly but, when, but, when, he, when he arrived. It's true, but I'm yes. just saying that I don't think Infantino, mm -hmm. in the context of how FIFA is set up, mm -hmm. has the wherewithal to instruct a man to travel to attend something mm -hmm. when it is that the rules are suggesting, or the, term, the climate is suggesting yeah. that he shouldn't. Can, can I ask you a question? Yes. Uh, put that in a Caribbean football union oh, yes. context. And the answer is yes. 20 years and ago. the answer is yes. Okay. So, so you, 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 you haven't given me the question and I'm <laughs> telling you yes. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Here, yes, Lance, 100%. Yeah. Okay, but okay. At FIFA, I think it works. Because whatever Jack Warner words. said Anything, sir. went. Anything, yes, sir. Yes, yes. Yes. Anyway, meanwhile, the FIFA boss spoke of him. Gianni Infantino added his voice to the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. Well, added his voice to those criticizing the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, urging Russian President Vladimir Putin to engage in meaningful peace talks. Plea to all of those who have uh, some power in this world, to all of those who are in important political positions in the world, please, please, stop conflicts and wars. Please, for our children, for our future. Please engage in dialogue, even with your worst enemy. Please try to come together. Yeah, that's the FIFA president um, sending a message, not as direct as you know one would have liked, but mm. uh, diplomacy at play mm. and appealing for talks to happen. Yeah, um, for the record, Ukraine was represented at the Congress. They, yes. they, they were there just to... They're in good standing with FIFA. Yeah, so. yeah. Mm. I just want, you know, because that, that's where the issue is Ukraine and, and Russia, and we've been speaking a lot about Russia. So Ukraine were actually there. And uh, Infantino actually announced today that he is going up for a third, third term Can't for, lose. For, for election. Can't lose that. Yeah. Um, also, the story came out about him, which we spoke about yesterday, distancing himself from the biennial World Cup yes, which proposal. Was rubbish. Rubbish. Proposal. Yes. Yeah, but he, 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 there was a narrative coming from him today which suggested that he, he didn't himself propose it. Yes. It, it was proposed and yes. he was just allowing some polls yes. to, to get a feel yes. of, 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 of how the, the football world globally would, would have felt about it. Yes. Again, it's, it's an electioneering tactic, but it's a medium to longer term electioneering tactic because mm -hmm. it's one of those things you can always do and then you go back to the electorate to say, look, the money boys want to keep the World Cup every four years and yeah. keep it a closed shop. 
I wanted to make it more frequent so you could get more money in your pocket. You stood to gain three, what, what was the figure? 300 million, three, three million euros or three million pounds. It was something with a three yeah. in, in your pockets, in your collective pockets, in your, in your association coffers. But look, they stopped me. They cut my hands off. So I, I wanted to do that yes, for you. Yes, yes. But the money people said no. Yes. You know, I come back to you for another term. With another term, I can work on something like that. That's, that's Lance. I had the strategy done. Pat, that's what he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Infantino and um, Football World Cup coming up in Qatar later on this year and um, we're all anxious to see it and quite frankly I'm happy that it's every four years. I, I, I love it but uh, two years for me George would have sort of watered, watered down the effect of this glorious event. Yeah, every, everything, every, Lance, every day I look at the TV, I see cricket, you know? yeah. you're tired of it, every day, oh my goodness, yeah, we don't want the football to get like that, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm sure you won't get tired of horse racing. No, 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 no. Back, every back, day. Back, back with more on the zone after this. Every day. <laughs> Keep watching SportsMax on YouTube for live and exciting sports. Subscribe to SportsMax on cable and download the SportsMax app to watch anytime, anywhere.